Hi there and welcome along to row 26 of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts. Now today is all about the throwback for me. Not only am I wearing a hoodie from the team I used to row for, Free Spirits, tonight I am playing drums in a band I haven't played with for over 30 years. Yes, I'm that old. But today's row is also a throwback because we're going back to one earlier in the series where we do five minutes at 20 strokes a minute and 2K plus 18 pace, followed by one minute at 15 strokes a minute. Now pace for that, it doesn't matter. Those 15 strokes a minute are just about working on your connection and your timing. Now, when it comes to that 2K plus 18 pace, what that means is that 5 out of 10, walking up a flight of stairs, heart rate's up, breathing rate's up, but you don't feel laboured, okay? That's kind of what that 2K plus 18 low intensity 5 out of 10 pace is. Uh, and that's what we're going to kind of experience in today's warm-up. Look at that for a segue. <laughs> so, it's so a four-minute warm-up we're going to do today, but we have to set up our machine first. So, in a concept two, that means going straight to the drag factor and setting it to where you want it to be. If you don't know where you want it to be, then just set the lever between four and five, because too low isn't a problem. Too high is a problem on a clean machine anyway. If you don't have a drag factor, please check out the video I have here on the channel. If you're on a non-concept two and you just have a resistance dial, set it so you get a nice feel from the stroke, you feel connected, but you don't have to heave against it to get the thing moving, all right? Next up, if you're able to, please go to your monitor and set it to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down, both of which will ruin your posture. And finally, go to those foot plates and if you're able to adjust the height of them, then please set them to a height where you can come into the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically, okay? If you're set too high in the foot plates, it can get a little bit tough to get there. If you're set too low, you can go scooting straight past and your backside goes away from you, you lose some power. And there's a tiny chance of injury to your lower back too. All right, less talking, more rowing. So let's get into this four minute warm up. I run about 20 strokes a minute and I just want you to start with enough of a push of your feet that you can feel the connection to the machine, okay? So kind of run about the same as if you're standing up from a squat, okay? Here we go then in three, two, one, and we're off. So, like I say, not loads of power. You want to start off relatively gentle because it's a warm-up anyway. Then you use this first minute to work on the timing between your feet pushing into the foot plates and your hands connecting the handle to the machine. That's the point where you bite into it, okay? And what you want to do is push with your feet at the same time your hands connect. Simple. Simple, yes, but it takes quite a lot of kind of concentration to get that timing right if you're not used to it. Now, a forward tilt of your hips and straight arms will help you here. And it also is the optimum way to get that power into the machine by holding those straight arms and the forward tilt as you push your legs or push your feet at least into the foot plates. So, if you feel you have that timing right, you can start to increase power and take it up to that five out of 10 level, okay? So, you start to feel like you're putting in some effort. Heart rate rises, breathing rate rises, but it doesn't feel as though you're working hard. You should still be able to have a conversation. And you should think, especially at this stage, I could do this for ages. But if you start to feel haggard, labored, tired even, this early on, you're going too hard. <laughs> so 2K plus 18 is the reference pace if you have a 2K training pace. One more stroke here though, and we're gonna take one foot out. Put it on the ground and continue rowing. And this will help your flexibility coming forwards especially. Get that leg that's still strapped in into that vertical position. Try not to go past it. It's easier to. With only one leg strapped in, you can hang on, go all the way forwards. <laughs> but you don't want to do that because it overstretches you and you get power leaks and things. Let's change feet. But it also gives you a chance to just concentrate on that leg press out from the front. Think about posture. Just slows everything down a little bit. Even if you're still rowing at 20 strokes a minute, weirdly with only one leg in, it feels slower. 
It's not, but it feels slow. <laughs> One more stroke here and then put the other foot back in. Tighten your straps, legs straight and roll with your back and arms. So all you're doing is swinging over your back and then pulling in your arms. And then you release your arms and tilt forwards again. If your back is just rocking from one o'clock to 11 o'clock, one o'clock to 11 o'clock, but the important part is that you rock then pull, okay? You take up the initial tension of the chain with that rock. Right, let's roll to the front of the machine, arms straight, forwards tilt, and press out with your legs. Not too hard, okay? This is about working on timing and body position, okay? You're not gonna get any more warm in this last 30 seconds, so just press out enough that you connect, but work on that timing and work on holding that forwards tilt and arms straight as you press out. Get your body used to being in this position as you drive. One more. If you can get the feel for that right, then it means that when you do come to add in power, pressure, whatever you want to call it, then hopefully you're going to have that sensation for holding that forwards tilt and arms straight for as long as possible before you swing and pull. Right, so I'm going to do what I've been doing the entire month, apart from a couple of rows, and I'm going to replay the video I made of this in 2021, because I'm a big lazy boy. <laughs> no, it's just simple, I've made it once, why not? Um, and I'm going to roll along to myself in the meantime. So I will see you in half an hour for a uh, cool down and some stretching. So please enjoy your 30 minutes and really do try and fall in love with those 15 strokes a minute. Right, so we're going to start off at 20 strokes per minute and at 2k plus 18 pace, and I will talk you through everything that we need to do, okay? Right, here we go then. In three, two, one, let's go. Oh, right. So as far as stroke rate is concerned, then you can watch me on the video. Just take a stroke when I take a stroke. You can listen to me on the podcast and you should hear the whoosh of my flywheel so you know when I'm taking a stroke plus my speech pattern is very much based around oh come on watch shush, shush. there we go based around speaking in between that dry phase of the stroke so you should just fall into the same rhythm Plus you can count down in threes on the monitor for these 20 strokes a minute and then count down in fours for the 15 strokes a minute. But hopefully once you lock into the, the rhythm, the groove, You won't need any of these external references. You'll just kind of, almost like meditation, you'll just fall into it and just hit that rhythm like a metronome. But that really only happens when you have a good fluid, rhythmic stroke in the first place. And that's really what today is about. But giving you a chance to slow things down and work on that flow. So not only within these main five minute chunks at 20 strokes a minute, but get a chance to go into slow-mo at 15s. Of course, you don't need to do the 15s. You can keep it up at 20 the whole way, but if you feel you're struggling with either the fluidity of your technique or even just any aspect of technique, then slowing it right down 
it's a really good idea. I much prefer it to pick drills where you stop entirely. They have their place, but I also feel the danger is that they break up the stroke and they don't really help you build in this rhythm and fluidity because it's all about making sure you never stop that's why I don't like the pick drills because they make you stop everything always moves there's maybe like a twentieth of a second as I go between rolling forwards to driving backwards but everywhere else things are always moving when I get to the back of the stroke my hands instantly start going forwards again to recover for the next stroke and they trigger my forward lean and then my knees bend it's like Tai Chi everything just flows into itself so in five strokes time we'll try this by slowing right down to 15 strokes a minute you ready? in two one let's slow it down so hands rock knees arms rock knees arms rock knees arms rock knees I notice I'm still putting in a good push of the legs to get through the stroke my pace has only really dropped off about three seconds because my leg drive is still up there it's my recovery that I'm now just taking time over to make sure I'm in the right positions last one all right let's get back into it 20 strokes a minute again and that's what we do okay so it's not about limping through a very soft leg drive it's not like a weak handshake of a stroke you're still pushing hard with the legs in order to generate power into the machine but then you're slowing the recovery right down to work on your sequencing I usually prefer a ratio of 2 to 1 when rowing which means my drive speed is twice as fast as my recovery so in today's example when it's 3 seconds per stroke it means that I go 1, 2, 3 1, 2, 3 1, 2, 3 OK? I don't need to keep on counting, do I? <laughs> but on the 15 strokes a minute it's more like 3 to 1 where my drive speed is three times faster than the recovery or at least 
the recovery is three times slower than my drive and that gives ample time to work on my technique work on my body positions because that's what the 15s are there for they don't really help you build power and although you're working they're not exactly the most intense in the world for building fitness but they will give you a chance to work on your groove your technique so let's quickly talk about a bit of technique before we hit the next 15s and that's the position you want to be in at the drive and that position is in a forward lean tilting over your hips so not collapsing your lower back in order to tilt forwards arms straight out in front of you shins in a vertical position which is usually controlled by how far you slide on the machine chin neutral you're just looking straight ahead arms relaxed handle height is nice and neutral in front of you and fingers hooked over the handle now if you can maintain all of that <laughs> as you push your feet into the machine then as the power goes in you should really feel like a hang off the handle as the power surges from your hands into the handle without you pulling against it and that's the important part okay four three two one here we go one and recover drive and recover so you could almost almost do one second drive three seconds recover here to take your time hands rock knees hands rock knees okay and you're always moving you're not holding to a finish so hands come in and out rock knees there's always something moving even though it's just my lips because I can't stop talking <laughs> last one all right back into 20 strokes a minute again and 2k plus 18 pace now hopefully because of these one minute slowdowns your kind of perception of intensity shouldn't really climb much from where you started so if you don't have a 2k training pace then well then I recommend doing a 2000 meter time trial they're lots of fun people love them you're not you're missing out on 
but what you're missing out on is something that really gives you the proper benchmark for how fit and strong and how good your technique is right now and then as you improve your fitness your strength and your technique you then come back to do a 2k again to kind of prove that and see how much you've improved by but if you don't have one right now and you are rowing by a effort out of 10 value then it should be that your perceived effort at the start of the row and right now as we're a minute away from the halfway point shouldn't really have changed by much maybe if this is a borderline 5 or 6 out of 10 it's now a proper official 6 out of 10 but you shouldn't really be climbing that much more than that and when it comes to using the effort scale that's the important thing is that you need to be consistent with the pace you're putting in rather than trying to keep it to the same effort level so if you started this row and a 5 out of 10 effort you were rowing at 2 minutes 15 pace per 500 meters then you hold that the whole way through well apart from the 15 strokes a minute bits you don't adjust your pace in order to always keep it at 5 out of 10 there's different ways to train you can get mafetone heart rate training which is, which is about keeping that intensity bottom and if it gets too much you slow down or heart rate zone training which is similar if your heart rate goes too high you slow down but my training is based around the pace that you row at in reference to your two kilometer best time trial at the moment and that's how you well in my mind that's how you're able to push and increase your performance and fitness okay here we go then in four three two one let's slow it right down keep a nice fluid movement going on here let yourself get in to the right positions there's no need to rush and if you don't feel you're getting that real connection through the drive like I am then chances are you're not experiencing the hang of which I spoke previously so you really want to hold that forward lean and arms straight as you push with the legs last one all right back up to 20 strokes a minute
and it is important from a power generation point of view and a fitness efficiency point of view and also an injury prevention point of view that you try to hold that forward lean and straight arms as you push your legs into the machine now you need to have nice relaxed arms and shoulders to help that power get in there I said before that it's like water skiing you don't see someone on water skis grabbing her onto the handle fighting the boat that's towing them you see them with nice straight arms to let the power from the boat flow through their body and down to their feet and so straight relaxed arms loose shoulders that are nice and down and comfortable and natural rather than up in your ears tense ah, 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 ah. <laughs> that'd be an angry zombie but you want to be a relaxed zombie as you row arms out in front of you a nice friendly zombie you've had your feed you're in a good mood you're nice and relaxed and then the power as you push into the machine with your feet it goes up through your posterior chain through your back shoulders tendons of your straight arms and into your fingers pretty much uninterrupted and then with your fingers just like hooks over the handle instead of a tense death grip then all that happens is that force from your legs goes into the handle and that force then goes to the chain and into the flywheel making it turn and then once your legs are about halfway done they start to fade the power and so that's why you wait until halfway before you swing over your hips from that forward lean to the backward lean and it really is worthwhile putting a mirror in front of you or running a video camera to analyze later because it's really easy to swing too soon and lose that connection and the hang okay five four three two one here we go slow it down drive arms tilt knees drive arms rock 
knees. Whew. It's nice, slow it down. Body has a chance to catch up on itself from a cardio point of view and you can work on the fluid movements through the different phases of the stroke let those hands come in then straight back out again let your body's natural rebound send them right out in front so they're over your knees before you bend your knees alrighty then back up to 20s for the last time so where do we get to? the back swing so the swing over your back adds power back in as your legs begin to fade but obviously your back is only swinging from a 1 o'clock to an 11 o'clock so it's going to fade too which is why right after you start your backswing you finally pull in your arms your arms have been straight up until that point so straight pull straight pull push pull that's how you think about it push pull so it's all about legs and then arms with a little bit of a rock of your back in between and the handle should finish right about sternum height if you finish high then you're shifting the muscles that are used from your big powerful lats to your less powerful and resilient delts and forearms and that's a one-way ticket to golfer's elbow and tennis elbow or worse torn muscles and you still want to keep your shoulders nice and loose and relaxed at the back try not to snatch early with your shoulders and certainly try not to finish with them up around your ears so you raise at the top which can often be accompanied by a chin dump too so you go Hur. it's like you look into your navel Hur. one more for fun Hur. <laughs> and actually just demonstrating that I could feel my intercostals going excuse me please stop that so I will and I'll get back to pace because that slowed me right down and then if you send your elbows through your sides rather than totally chicken winged out to, this, to both sides Woo. if you come straight through with maybe a slight outward movement then that's how you employ your body's natural rebound from the rib cage and tendons and things that wants to send your elbows back forwards again and therefore your hands back forwards and as they come out straight you then tilt back over your hips so that once your 
hands are past your knees. You're in that forward tilt and you just have to bend your knees in order to return in the perfect position to the next stroke again without having to straighten your arms anymore or tilt your back anymore so the recovery is absolutely vital to get you ready for the next stroke okay in four three two one last 15s make sure to push with those legs so you hang off the handle and get the force in there and if you don't feel you're getting the full leg drive then when you get to the back of the stroke point your toes to the front of the machine and that will help you get your legs all the way down what have I done? I've gone one stroke too fast or one stroke too slow uh. right there we go back on track again I think obviously went one too fast last one I almost got <laughs> almost got to the end without messing up the 15s 20 seconds, 20 seconds. <laughs> anyway. Whew, okay, back to the row along branded t-shirts. I can't be sitting here promoting free spirits the whole time, can I? Huh. Anyway, right, I hope you enjoyed that one. I mean, I'd love it. There's something, it slows everything right down. Those 15 strokes a minute are perfect. It really gives you a chance to think about that connection and to like just just take the time to set yourself up and to try and hold that position as you drive through. That's why I was banging on about that in the warm-up so much today. So hopefully you're not lying on the floor after a roll like that, so you've got enough time to get straight back into a cool down. If you are lying on the floor exhausted, exhausted, I think you went a little bit too hard. <laughs> but maybe you didn't, maybe you actually thought today, you know what, I'm gonna roll this one good and powerful. 20 strokes a minute, good and powerful, is a, a great workout, but it wasn't today's workout. So. Could do this two minutes, um, uh, round about your warm up pace, so that kind of 2k plus 18, 5 out of 10, basically the pace you were rowing most of that at. But then you're just going to gradually slow down through the course of the two minutes. You ready for this? Okay, in three, two, one, let's cool down. Yeah, let's cool down. That's my audition for Peloton. I'm not going to get a job with them, am I? That's what I'm like. I just couldn't do that. I've never, never really connected, is that the right word? With the bombastic PT type. I remember, so cool down, blah, 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 all right? I've talked enough to you about rowing. I remember being at um, David Lloyd Tennis Club in Renfrew in Glasgow. That's where I used to play squash. And uh, there was a particular PT that worked there that would run spin classes. And the way the the gym floor was set up. There was no like closed studio, so if they were doing a spin class, uh, everybody could hear the spin class. I just remember this one PT that would just yell at all these platitudes at people. Come on, you got this. You're stronger than you think you are. Come on, you've got it. And then he'd just start yelling numbers at them. 50. Huh? 60. Huh? <laughs> what's, what's that then? I just thought, oh, I don't know always struck me and even if I'm in a know, any kind of a class and someone's yelling all these kind of motivational messages at things oh man I just break out in laughter <clears throat> I think that's one of the reasons why in my videos here on Row Along I just waffle yeah I talk technique and I talk motivation and all that stuff and yes on a few of the tougher rows, I might start to say, hold on, you've got it, you've got it. But to be fair, I'm talking to myself. Literally, because <laughs> there's nobody else here. But all those motivational things, 
is trying to get myself through to the end of a row. One last stroke in the cool down. So, although it may come across to you, hopefully it also comes across to you and you get a little bit of a zing out of it. It's all about me. It's all about me. All this is about me. It's not, it's all about you. Um, right, sorry, <laughs> cool down's done. Uh, we're gonna get to a stretching session next. If you don't have time to stretch, please take a moment to stretch your quads, your hamstrings, and hopefully your glutes, but not in the shower, because that would be awful slip. And yeah, nobody wants that, okay? Uh, just, but do take a moment to stretch. As much as I'm being comical about falling over the shower, it's more, it's really important you stretch. If you have time, there he is, Stretchy John. It's almost Christmas soon, you should get a Santa hat on. He's going to take you through some guided stretching and you can just stretch along with him. Or if you don't have space and you want to stretch on your machine, follow me and I will take you through how I stretch on the machine. Uh, oh, I was rowing, yes, very good. Um, okay, so <laughs> feet back on the foot plates, straps slightly loose so you can flick your toes against them, creates a nice angle between your feet and your legs, and then sit slightly back in the seat just to be sure you're not going to fall off it. Hands in the air and fold forwards. Okay, now the one thing I'd kind of tend to do, because at this stage I'd I tend to start going, oh, you really want to get the stretch into your hamstrings. It's really important at this stage to get your hamstrings, stretch in the hamstrings. Because I'm doing this with my hands, I'm actually ruining my own stretch. When I do that, I get a heck of a good stretch. Stretch, stretch. When I do that, I don't. So I'm just going to talk to you and say, make sure you can get good stretch in your hamstrings. Um, if you've missed that stretch, chances are it could be that your knees have popped up, it could be that you've got the angles of your feet wrong, it could be that you've not done that fold forwards, it could you've kind of bent um, instead of it being a fold. So it's important that you really just do think about bringing your upper chest down towards your legs rather than curling down. Because if nothing else, that just promotes that knee bend. Oh, I know you're ahead of me, Stretchy John. I'm waffling today, sorry. Okay, let's do our glutes next. So one leg up on the rail, bring your other foot over so that your heel is in the crook of your knee. This knee's now popping up in the air. Bring it across your body so it's in line with your face, your knee, your foot, woohoo. And then hold it in place with one arm and then take your other arm, hello, and hold on to the back of the machine for stability, if you wish, and then rotate round. And as you do that rotate round, because you then also have that tendency to really hold this knee in place and pull it slightly across your body, you should really get that stretch down there in the glute. I know I can feel it. To be fair, I get, I've said to be fair a few times in this row today, I've got to stop it. As an editor, that's terrible. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of the time when I'm saying this is because it's, I suddenly realize it myself. I suddenly realize then that as you rotate around, as long as you keep that arm in place, that's what kind of creates that pull onto this knee. Every day's a learning day. <laughs> right, so let's change legs. Don't know what's wrong with me today. Uh, yeah, same thing. Bring that knee over, hold it in place and then rotate round. Remember, it's, it's, remember is another thing I say all the time, I've got to stop doing that. Um, it's not about wrenching and trying to pop your hip out of the socket by pulling on this knee so hard. So it's like you're bracing against it as you do this rotation round into your glute. Because it's not about pulling your knee across your body, it's about stretching your glute. So if you miss the point of the stretch, and you're like, yeah, I'm pulling my knee, yeah, and bringing nothing into your glutes. 50, and yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Let's move on to our quads. So stand next to your machine. You can rest one finger, one hand, one thumb, whatever you wish on the, the monitor for stability, or maybe you've got better balance than me and you don't even have to do that. And then pull one uh, leg behind you, hold on to your upper foot, and just give enough of a kind of a pull back that you feel that muscle kind of, well, basically that kind of zing, that spread of a stretch. And remember, it's the quads you're stretching here, okay? If you start to feel up here, up in your hip flexors, you're doing something wrong, whether it's your posture, whether you're flaring your leg out to the side, who knows? Now I'm gonna pretend that that fall over there was me meaning to swap legs. Woo, look at this. <laughs> yeah, so what's wrong? Why, why do I always, yeah. Ah, maybe I should go to yoga. Maybe I should take one of those classes where people are motivational and yelling stuff at you. And they can be all like, yes, you can be serene and balanced. And I'll come in one day and I'll go, you know what? I was wrong the whole time. Listening to an instructor is fantastic. I'm now actually not falling over. But look, I've done this whole section without falling over. Ta-da, da-da-da-da, I can dance. Right, you don't want to see me dance. Ooh, right, let's move on to our hip flexors. Knee on the ground, toes up behind, so you've got a nice 90 degree uh, angle. Knee uh, above your foot that's in front. That makes sense? 
hopefully podcast people, you get it. And then it, while you're in this position, you just push this hip forwards. And while doing that, you'll feel yourself sink down a little bit. That's perfectly fine, as long as you have a, a sink down with good posture, rather than it being that you lurch forwards, roll that lower or upper back, because we don't want that. Because then you don't get the stretch. And the whole point of this is to make sure and get the stretch into your hip flexor, okay? So otherwise, don't waste your time. Well, actually, still waste your time. I'm sure you could get some value out of doing that. Maybe just the time not rowing between just slowing down for a moment, you never know. Just everyone's got such busy lives. Let's change legs. And maybe just taking 10 minutes to just calm between a row and then going off to do something else. That might still be beneficial for blood pressure and stuff. But you might as well throw in a proper real stretch at the same time. <sighs> so my brain just suddenly started thinking about today. It's a terribly dreek day today. Here is a st Scottish word for you. Dreek. D-R-E-I, I think. I don't think it's I-E. Dreek. C-H. But at the end. It's like loch. Um, yeah. But it's a dreek day outside, which means that it's miserable. It's kind of... It's not raining, but it's wet and it's damp and it's dark and it's bleh. It's the best way to describe it. So... It means it's quite hard to get motivated to do anything. Um, you just want to kind of wrap yourself up in a blanket and just stay inside and go, I don't want to go outside. Typical autumn day, really. Okay, uh, let's move on to shoulders. Hands straight out in front of you. Hand straight out in front of you. Bring your arm across your body. Hold it in place with your other arm and just you should just create enough of a stretch through that shoulder uh, and straightens out that arm. You can flex off your fingers if you wish. This would be, oh, I was talking about power balls. This is what I could do. I could do my power ball. I was in yesterday's row. I was saying, oh, I've got to think about times hacks that I can do. Power balls, I can just pick one up. And I just feel like it's like the hand from the thing. It's like there's a disembodied hand at the end of my arm. Let's change arms. Oh, this one's not. <laughs> oh. Do you know why? It's because, so I film, film these, uh, usually I film these the day before they go out. Um, I kind of film them, yeah, the day before, then I, I kind of upload them in the morning the, the day that they go out. However, because I had band practice last night ready for the gig I'm playing tonight, I'm now recording this on the proper day. So it is actually Saturday the 26th of November today, rather than me trying to pretend it's not. Um, <clears throat> so it means that I had like spaghetti bolognese and it's the end of the week and whatever, and I think that's probably why I've gone slightly mad. So hands together in front of your face, we'll do forearms next. So hands together, push them together, bring them down in front of your body as though you're some kind of karate expert. Um, karate, push them together. Um, you should have, basically your forearms should be kind of parallel to the ground. Your fingers will be at right angles to your wrists. And if you're giving a good push, then your wrists and your forearms, like underneath forearms, should be getting a nice stretch here, okay? So it's that kind of, you'll feel it in your wrists and then it will do that kind of, that again, the not burn, what do I call it? Oh, zing, that kind of zingy feeling where it just it spreads out from your wrists up into your, uh, out into your forearms. Especially if you've been using them quite a lot, um, you'll feel that stretch even more because they may be solid and like, Ugh. right? So that's forearm shoulders, yes, to them. Let's move on to our biceps. So we're gonna pretend we're ski jumpers or Red Bull flyers. Whoosh. And then we're gonna rotate our thumbs outwards. And that rotation of the thumbs should lengthen your biceps, okay? And then if you have a good posture and you've got a good stretch as well, then you kind of find your, your chest will open up as well and give yourself a nice, um, yeah, your chest opens up. I was also talking about the power breathe thing that I've been using. I really do feel like the, the, the difference, I went out for a run yesterday um, and in this kind of dreek, ugh, weather, and I found it a lot easier to, to breathe while I was out on quite a hard run. And whether it's psychosomatic or not, or whether it's uh, part of the power breathe, I don't know, but I'm gonna continue using the power breathe because it does, because you're kind of breathing against it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure it helps. Anyway, right, triceps next. I'm starting to slip for these. Sorry, sorry hand up in the air, put your hand on your spine. Your elbow will point to the sky. Use your other arm to just help it back so it really points straight up, okay? Um, yeah, I was just saying I'm starting to slip. When I, when I started making this latest 2022 series of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts, the primary goal I had was to make the intros shorter and the outros shorter. Failed today. <laughs> The past couple of rows, because on when I'm editing these together, I basically stretch John up there. I time stretch him to match how long I do on the machine. Let's change arms. Um, so it's I think standard. He should only last about six minutes. But I find I've had to like stretch him up to ten minutes, which is why he's, <laughs> why he's in slow mo 
where you see him kind of moving from face to face going, but well, he doesn't speak, so I don't let him speak. He'd want paid if I'd let him speak. Right, you done? Okay, he's done. So I'm gonna be done with stretching as well. Right, there we go. It's been a strange journey through my brain today, hasn't it? Um, so we're gonna, for, I'd like to use a hashtag at the end of the videos, just really just proof that you made it this far through the video, <laughs> video no other reason. Um, no. But in the comments, if you can leave me a comment on like YouTube or Twitter or Instagram or the Facebook group, wherever you wanna leave me a comment, um, then you can use the hashtag. And today we're gonna just call it throwback, okay? Because it's a throwback to, like I said, I was wearing my Free Spirits hoodie. I loved my time with that team. Um, uh, I am playing the drums for Half Cut tonight, which will be a lot of fun, and we just did a row that we did earlier on in the month, which is how we're going to finish off this series, just continue to revisit a couple of rows that we've done throughout this series. So I hope you'll join me for the rest of them. There's only a few to go. We're with 26 today, so it's 7, 8, 9, 10. Only four more to go. Um, and then we'll be done with the series. So that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and it's also, it means it's, it works quite well for the holiday challenge. If you just sit down and do these 30 minute rows uh, through the Concept 2 holiday challenge, then you'll just amass meters and it'll be fantastic. But um, oh yeah, and you, you get to see me every day. <gasps> oh, the only other person that, that looks, that you know the feeling you've got in your stomach right now of, oh, imagine you were my wife. Oh. <laughs> and every day you're like, oh, him again. So yeah, at least you can turn off YouTube. She can't turn me off. Oh, well, hang on, that sounds a bit... Well, actually, to be fair, she can't, because I have a beautiful, amazing wife. She cannot turn me off. There you go. I'd say, right, the last thing, last thing I'm going to say, <laughs> and then I'm going to go, I promise. This is just my little um, yesterday morning. So yesterday, there was the 25th of November, which was the day after Thanksgiving for all... Uh, Amer well, the day after Thanksgiving, doesn't matter if you're American folks, it literally was. Um, and traditionally, that makes it Black Friday. So as, as we're having breakfast, I, I looked her in the eyes and uh, I'm going to say, you know, my love, you're my Black Friday deal. I try to be romantic and kind of saying how, how amazing and how lucky I was that she was in my life and whatever. And she's what? She's like, what? Cheap and not worth it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I lost out there. <laughs> It was very funny. We we lolled, ha ha ha. But she's very she's too clever for me sometimes. But anyway, but yeah, uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, no. Oh. So yeah, she can't she can't go on YouTube and go. I've had enough of him. I'm gonna go. Is that all right with you? I've got a lot to do today. I've got to pack up a drum kit and stuff. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I've still got to edit this video together as well. So um, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for putting up with me. I mean, good grief. Uh, like, like I say, you you get the option too. So actually, maybe you choose. Julie doesn't, so, well, I suppose, yeah. Anyway, right, look after yourselves, yeah, stuff. Have a great weekend. I will see you in a future video or a past video. It's entirely up to you. Uh, until then, take care, be well, bye-bye. <laughs>